Hebrews chapter number 11. If you're a student of the Bible, you know Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the faith chapter. It's even called the hall of faith. Uh, many of the patriarchs are mentioned here and how uh, by faith they serve the Lord. Uh, you can look at Noah, and Moses, and Abraham, and many of the patriarchs and how God used them mightily. Can I say no one in this chapter was perfect, but everyone in this chapter put their faith and trust in the Lord. Uh, and I want to get down to about verse number 37, and uh, we'll read through the end of the chapter, and uh, we'll get to the thought that God has for us tonight. Verse 37 says, They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. All the, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God who's faithful and true, a friend that sticking closer than a brother. Thank you, the Lord. You're just as powerful when we're going through the storms uh, and through the valleys as you are when we're on the mountaintop. Uh, and Father, we bless your holy name. I do pray you'd continue to touch Miss Crystal. I pray that you'd continue to touch Brother Ed. I pray that you'd help Miss Ali Cato. Father, I do pray that you'd touch Brother Bob tonight. I pray for those that are traveling, you'd be with them. I pray for Chris Moore, Miss Riley, and Brother Chad's friend. Uh, uh, Lord, not doing well. I pray you'd touch him. Uh, Father, I pray for little Samantha, got to have surgery in the morning, that God... You'd be with the surgeons and the nurses and the physicians. And God, I pray that you'd help her. And God, you'd give her a better quality of life. Uh, and Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, I pray you'd manifest yourself in power and unction. God, I certainly do pray, uh, Lord, for that one that may be hurting, uh, that one that may be struggling, uh, that one that may be doubting, uh, that one that may be uh, 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 depressed, uh, that one that may be discouraged, uh, God, that one that may uh, uh, just need to once again fix their eyes upon the Lord. Uh, God, I pray for that one who's on fire for you. I pray for that one that's sick in your face. Uh, God, I pray that, God, uh, you would touch and meet the need of every heart. Uh, God, when we leave out of here, we leave out of here uh, leaving that song we sang, Victory in Jesus. Uh, God, help us tonight. Uh, do a work in our midst. Uh, God, certainly if there's any amongst us unsaved, lost without God, uh, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Lord, help us to live by faith. Uh, Look by faith uh, and lean on you through faith. Because uh, God, you're faithful and true. We bless your holy name. Uh, use this unworthy vessel now. Uh, and Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy uh, and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, I want to uh, 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 address a couple things from this text. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, if you will, uh, the power of faith. Uh, look back up in verse 32. Uh, the Bible says, And what shall I more say? Uh, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, uh, of Barak, uh, and of Samson, uh, and of Jephthah, uh, and David also, uh, and Samuel, of the, and of the prophets, uh, who through faith... Uh, subdued kingdoms, uh, wrought righteousness, uh, obtained promises, uh, stopped the mouths of lions. Uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, if their faith uh, uh, had the power uh, uh, to change kingdoms uh, and to change outcomes uh, and to change uh, outlooks, uh, can I say God's still on the throne? Uh, God's still well able to do that for you and I. Uh, why is our country a mess? Uh, why is our circumstances uh, uh, piling up? Uh, why is our mountains getting bigger? Uh, it sounds to me 
like somebody needs to get some faith. Uh, the Bible goes on to say this about uh, the power of faith. Uh, they quench the violence of fire, uh, escape the edge of the sword, uh, out of weakness were made strong, uh, wax valiant in the fight, uh, turn to flight the armies of of aliens. Uh, women received their dead, raised to life again, uh, and others were tortured, uh, not accepting deliverance, uh, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Uh, and others had trial of cruel, cruel mockings uh, and scourging. Uh, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments, uh, they were stoned, uh, they were sown asunder, uh, were tempted, uh, were slain with the sword. Uh, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being de uh, destitute, afflicted, uh, and tormented. Uh, preacher, how'd they overcome? Uh, preacher, how'd they get through that? Uh, preacher, how'd they face that? Uh, it's the power of faith, my dear friends. Uh, today, you look at somebody cross-eyed. They get their feelings all hurt. Uh, and they're out of the, out of the work of God. Because uh, you know why? They put their faith in the wrong things. We live in a day and age uh, where most of the preaching, uh, most of the teaching uh, is all about trying to get you over your feelings uh, and trying to get you over uh, uh, your little deals and your little circumstances, the little pressures of life. Uh, uh, friends, you read that crowd. Uh, we haven't faced anything compared to what they faced. Uh, I'll tell you what, if we came against what they came against... Uh, most churches would cease to exist. Oh, God help us to realize and embrace the power that comes by faith. Can I say the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Without faith it's impossible to please God, it says earlier in the chapter. Uh, let me ask you tonight, how's your faith? Uh, Say, preacher, my faith meter may be a little low. Uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, you want your faith increased? Uh, uh, turn off your computer. Uh, turn off your uh, uh, TV. Uh, turn off your phone uh, and get in the word of God uh, and start reading it. Uh, start trusting what God said. Uh, start believing the God of this book. Uh, start uh, uh, living with the God of this book. Walk with him. Talk with him. And you'll see how he'll increase your faith. Uh, we see the power of faith. I want you to notice, if you will, the perplexing of faith. Look, if you will, in verse 38. In the middle of that verse, it said, They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. He said, Preacher, I thought these folks... Uh, had a special place in the Bible. They had such faith. There's a whole chapter dedicated to them. I, I, I heard where Joe Osteen said that uh, if you sow seed with God, God's going to give you mansions and all kinds of things in this life. Well, this crowd right here wandered in sheepskins. That was not sheep clothing of the day. Goat skins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Uh, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves. Here. Doesn't sound like they had a silver spoon in their mouth. These people were afflicted. These people uh, 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 were hunted. These people uh, were the off scour of the world. Nobody wanted to be around this crowd, but these, this crowd just believed in God. That's perplexing to me. Today, if people don't get a new car every two years, they don't have a nice house, they don't have uh, everything that they think that they should have in this world, then they think God's against them. Right. Amen. Hmm. Can I say, stuff has got in the way of people living for God. We are the most prosperous nation on the face of the earth, and we're one of the most wicked nations on the face of the earth. Prosperity has ruined many a people. And to be prospering God is not having stuff. It's having Him. Right. Contentment with godliness is great gain. Now, if God's blessed you with a lot of stuff, but the stuff doesn't have you, that's okay. But if all you want is stuff and think that stuff will satisfy you, let me help you with something right now. Bigger house isn't going to make you feel better. Uh, 
a shiny new car isn't going to make you more spiritual, make you feel better. Right. Hmm? You know what your problem is? Your problem is internal, not external. And you're trying to satisfy the internal with external, and you'll never be satisfied. Yep. Hmm? Amen. Uh, you've got to work on the inside of the cup. You're washing the outside of the cup. Hmm? Uh, that's what the Pharisees did. Uh, they washed the outside of the cup, but the inside of the cup was full of dead men's bones. Inside, some of you is dead tonight. Hmm? Because you're trusting in external things. You need to start trusting in God, walking with God, living for God, believing in God. You let God do a work on the inside, the outside take care of itself. And by the way, you'll be satisfied wherever God plants you when God does work on the inside. We see the power of faith, the perplexing of faith. Notice the principled by faith. Look at verse 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. They were looking forward by faith to what God would do in the future. Most of them didn't have a Bible. Most of them knew not who the Messiah would be and that the Messiah was coming at a certain time. They just believed God and took Him at His word. Some of them only got a promise and they hung their whole life on one promise and they lived for God. My dear friends, we've received the promise. What is the promise? We've been saved by grace through faith. Amen. Right. Huh? We didn't have to... Uh, 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 live up to the law to receive the blessings of God. Amen. My dear friends, we trusted in Christ. We looked back to the cross. They was looking ahead towards the cross. huh? These men died in faith. Uh, these men, uh, uh, my dear friends, did not receive the promise. They do not have the heritage of being in the bride of Christ. They're the Old Testament saints. Uh, uh, this crowd right here will be judged at the great white throne judgment. The bride of Christ uh, will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, they did not understand to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. Uh, they did not have a copy of the Word of God, nor the Holy Ghost living inside of them. Uh, at best, the Holy Ghost would fall on them and then the Holy Ghost would lead them. But my dear friends, from the moment you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted Him by faith, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You've never been alone. He indwells you. He walks with you. He convicts you. He confirms you. Hey, He is the one that soothes you and gives you peace. He's the one that's a help to you and I. They didn't have that. My dear friends, it's the sweet Holy Ghost of God. God, uh, when we read the Bible, illuminates the Scripture, uh, builds our faith, uh, helps us. They didn't have the Word of God. They didn't have the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, we've received the promise. Uh, we have everything of the fullness of the Godhead. Uh, what a blessing for what God's done for us. Uh, and yet, where's our faith? Mm. They were principled just by faith. We have the promises and God Himself indwelling us. And yet many people are not principled. Many people, regardless of what the preacher preaches on, they're going to go back and live however they want to. They're not going to live by the Bible. They're not going to have any standards or conviction about them. If I preach on dress, people cringe. If I preach on money, people cringe. If I preach on living holy, people cringe. Uh, if I preach on faithfulness, people cringe. Uh, 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 they cringe because uh, they're the Lord of their life. On, Not God. Mm. Uh, it's amazing. People say, oh, Brother Doug's a mean-spirited preacher when he preaches on certain things. Uh, all I got to do is mention one word and half the crowd tunes me out. Facebook. And yet some of you, as soon as you get in your car, you're doing this. And haven't even taken inventory of what was preached that night and started applying amen. it. You know I'm telling you the truth. Might as well say amen. I ain't even got to the message and some of you are already under conviction. The altar's always open. They were principled by faith. 
We have the Word of God, and there's folks that aren't principled. Huh? Listen, God understands when you're providentially hindered. But there's some folks, they're just not faithful. Yeah. Amen. A preacher said it this morning, we talked about it last night. He said, Preacher, it drives me crazy why people can't be faithful to the house of God. I said, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. Yes, sir. Hmm? All you can do is preach to them the truth, and when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ, they'll wish they were faithful. Yes, sir. Or when God takes them to the uh, uh, chastening house, and begins to wear them out with the chastening rod, they'll wish they were faithful. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, that went over real well. Notice the position through faith in verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Do you know why God sealed us? Do you know why God gave us the Word of God? Do you know why God told us, told us to live by faith and put all this into action? So those that are lost will have no excuse. We, they would have encountered us, yeah. and they will see a better way. Yeah. And when they reject the Lord, they're without excuse. Yeah. He provided something better for us to truly be a light to this dark world. Let me ask you the question. Are you being a light? Most Christians are just trying to survive till they get to the rapture. You know, there's a little problem with that. That's not what Jesus told us to do. Amen. He told us to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He told us to make a difference in this world. He told us to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the world. Can I say that God's people ought to be the envy of the world? Yeah. And instead, the world don't even take notice of us. Amen. I've used this illustration before, but it just came to my mind. I'm going to use it again. How many of you got white hair like me and you remember them old kerosene lamps? Anybody remember them? Didn't them things stink? Yes, sir. One thing about them kerosene lamps, you know, you'd have to trim that wick like them things, put them up with kerosene. Sometimes they put a little food coloring in so kerosene was different colors. But you can have that thing blazing. But if you didn't clean that soot yeah. out of that globe every now and then, it didn't give off much light. Let me help you with something. The lamp was giving out the same amount of light it always gave out. But the soot hindered the light from being seen. Can I say what's wrong? The light's still as powerful as it always was. But the vessels aren't as clean as they need to be to impact this world. I want to preach on this thought. Look at verse 38. The Bible says, Of whom the world was not worthy. This whole crowd that is mentioned and unmentioned. There was a whole lot more under the title others than there were named. That other crowd didn't have their names in this chapter. They got sown asunder, fed to lions, cut into pieces, beheaded, that crowd. And the Lord says of them, of whom the world was not worthy. When God looks around today, Brother Ron, I wonder if he's looking around at all those that are saved and saying, well, the world's not worthy of this one. The world's not worthy of this one. Or if he's just looking for a man to make up the gap. Make up the gap in the hedge. I'm going to preach on this thought. That crowd of whom the world was not worthy impacted their world. And I want to preach on making an impact making an impact what impact are we making bless my heart brother Donald said that nurse seen something Miss Crystal no doubt that nurse is dealing with cancer victims all the time that nurse is dealing with folks that are taking chemo all the time 
That nurse is no doubt uh, looking at folks all the time. Uh, and he, she's seen something different in Miss Crystal than she sees in most people that come there. Uh, she's seen something in her countenance, uh, something in her spirit, uh, something in her courtesy. Uh, she didn't see that other one. I'd have to say that Miss Crystal made an impact on that nurse. Uh, uh, listen, that's why God uh, saved us and left us here uh, so we'd make an impact on other people. Uh, other people. People uh, would look at our lives. Uh, they'd see our countenance. Uh, they'd hear our speech. Uh, they'd say there's something they've got that most people don't have. Uh, they have a hope that is not in this world uh, or of this world. Uh, they got a hope much bigger than that. Uh, hey, God help us to make an impact. Uh, can I say we can make an impact? with those around us simply by having faith. Amen. That's what this whole chapter's about. It is so rare for people to really live by faith. Now we talk about faith, but it's rare that somebody actually lives by faith. Can I say... When God called me to Victory Baptist Church to pastor in 1997, I'd been preaching about eight or nine years, Brother Ed, and I'd preached on faith. But I didn't know anything about faith. Thought I did. When you leave a big corporate job and all, and you can ask him, he's right here, he was the treasurer, he wrote my checks. And all that y'all promised me was $150 a week. Brother, I'm telling you, you'll find out a whole lot about God. you got to live by faith. I grew up watching my grandma and grandpa pray in groceries. I grew up watching folks uh, pray for God to heal the sick because they couldn't afford to go to the doctor. Uh, I grew up watching people uh, that truly uh, depended on God for everything uh, from God's hand to their mouth. Uh, they depended on God. Uh, but friend, I'd never had to do that. Uh, hey, I, I grew up uh, in a middle class family. Uh, I grew up uh, having everything I ever wanted or desired. Uh, hey, the Lord blessed me with a wonderful wife. Uh, blessed me with a wonderful job. Uh, hey, blessed me. Uh, we weren't rich, but we was doing good. Uh, but God said, uh, uh, trust me, follow me, uh, and listen. Uh, I'd like to say uh, every day uh, God opened the windows of heaven and poured out a blessing that we could not contain. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, Brother Adrian, there were some days uh, the cabinets and the cupboard got lean. Uh, there were some days... Uh, we didn't know where it was coming from. Uh, there were some days uh, uh, we even waned and didn't trust my faith and trusted in MasterCard uh, or Visa. Uh, but I'm telling you, neighbor, what a good day in my life uh, when I realized God was in control uh, and God could take care of me. Uh, and hey, uh, everything I've got today uh, is because uh, uh, some 27, 28 years ago, uh, I realized God is on the throne uh, and God honors faith. Uh, and friend, you'll never impact anybody's life uh, until you learn to trust God by faith. Hallelujah. That's good. People trust their 401ks. Amen. They trust what they got in the bank. Yeah. They trust in resources. They trust in everything but God. The reason we don't make an impact, well, we don't know anything about faith. Amen. Before you reach out to trust in something, why don't you reach up and trust in Him? Right. Uh, he might save you a whole lot of heartache. <laughs> he might save you a whole lot of interest. He might save you a whole lot of uh, 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 depending on man and going through hoops and circles. Why don't you just learn to trust in God? Amen. And I say... You'll impact others when you truly learn to live by faith. You have faith. Others take notice. I'll tell you, people in the house of God take notice. They don't know about living by faith. Uh, 
Oh, we sing about it. We talk about it. Very few really know what it is to truly depend on God. I saw this quote. I thought it was pretty good. It says this. It says, It costs something to be a true Christian. Let that never be forgotten. To be a mere nominal Christian and go to church is cheap and easy work. But to hear God's voice and follow Christ and believe in Christ and confess Christ requires much, here it is, self-denial. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And see, we don't want to deny, deny self. Uh, we're, we're okay with serving God as long as it don't cost us anything. We're okay, you know, just uh, being called a Christian, being called a good church member, as long as we don't have to give up anything. And the biggest thing you've got to learn to give up is you. You're standing in the way. And God may never ask you to give up anything if you truly just give up you. Mm -mm. I wonder tonight, when was the last time you just came before God and said, God, I'm in the way. I'm so sorry. God, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. If Jesus Christ is our example, and he left heaven and came and did not do his will, I'm sure somewhere down and deep in the heart of him, he would have gladly told those that's about ready to nail him to the cross uh, what their future really held for them. But he yielded himself. He did not do his will. He did the will of his Father that sent him. When was the last time you truly yielded self to the hand of God? When we have faith and depend on God, we'll impact those around us. Friend, don't wait till you're getting chemo treatments to depend on God. You better start depending on him right now. And can I say something about that little lady right there? She just didn't start living for Jesus when this all came on her. Hmm? I've known her for a long time now. huh? And listen, she's been one that's been through a lot, and she's not perfect, and there's been things she struggled with, but there's one thing she always sought for, and that was God. God help us Amen. to depend on God. We'll impact others and those around us by having faith will impact those around us with fortitude. Let me ask you something. What's it take to knock you out of church? I pray you don't find out. But in this day and age, it don't take much. Mm -mm. Yeah, I can't believe some of the excuses people will tell me why they're not going to come to church. Well, I got I got relatives in, or I got somebody that's sick, or we got this birthday party. Or we got how come we let everybody else dictate to us right. how we're supposed to live for God? Yeah. Right. I thought we would seek the Lord first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, yeah. and everything else will be handed. You know why we don't impact them? Because we let them impact us. Yeah. Can I say the Lord gave me this? I was going to use it later, but He gave me this. We'll never convert the world by conforming to the world. Yeah. You, know why, you know why they're not coming to get saved? They don't see anything worth coming for. Right. Because if they put a little pressure on us, we'll cave to them every time. Hmm? God help us. You know what Paul said about fortitude? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said this in verse 24, Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. 
A night and a day have I been in the deep, uh, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, uh, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, uh, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, uh, besides those things that are without, uh, that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. Uh, who is weak? Uh, am I not weak? Uh, who is offended? Uh, and I burn not? Uh, if I must needs glory, I will glory in the things which concern mine infirmities. All that Paul went through, he still kept the faith. He had fortitude. Let me help you something. The Apostle Paul was not made out of anything different than you and I. Amen. Say, well, he had apostolic authority. Well, how come he couldn't heal himself? How come he couldn't deliver himself? How come he prayed thrice for the thorn in the flesh to be removed? And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yep. Regardless of what Paul went through, he still walked by faith. God help us to have some grit. Amen. Now let me just say this right now. We throw off a lot on the young generation today, and they have earned all of it. It's hard to find a young generation at a work. Miss Annette deals with 20, 19, 20 years old, coming in the office all the time. She'll say, you going to school? No. Got a job? No. Got a driver's license? No. What do you do? I play video games. Let me help you something. That's not all on the, on the, on the child. That's a lot on the parents. Uh, uh, and yesterday, uh, 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 Daniel and Xander made it real quick to let me know how Brother Jim had worked them down there on the farm. They say they know a little bit about work, huh? You need to know a little bit more, huh? Hey, I learned early on, bailing hay was not something I wanted to do for a career. That was something I wanted to do, put gas in my car, but I didn't want to do that for a career, huh? Amen. Listen, we throw off on this younger generation because a lot of them don't have a work ethic. Hmm? I mean, McDonald's, some places pay them $13, $14, $15 an hour. Brother Ed, when you was uh, 15, 16 years old, would you would work for 15 bucks an hour? Oh, yeah, you'd probably do it today, wouldn't you? Yeah. Huh? You know why they pay that? Because they can't get anybody to work it. Right. And we'll throw off on them. By the way, you're getting close. Get a job, son. I know your mama. You're going to work. You too. Get a job. Huh? Be all right. I heard you, I heard you yesterday. You and them boys talking about them cars. You want Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Bugattis and all that stuff. Let me help something. If you ever see one, lick the tires. That's as close as you're ever going to get to one. But go to work. Who knows? You might be able to get you a Chevette. Google. That's a car for you. Huh? Everybody remember that? Chevette meant Chevy junk. That's what that meant. Uh, I knew somebody had one. You couldn't even shift it out of gears. I mean, <laughs> you put the clutch in, it didn't move. I mean, it was junk from the factory. Junk. Uh, Pintos, too. I remember Aunt Lynn had a Pinto. Junk too. You know what Pintos are going for now? If you can find one, they're selling them things fifteen, sixteen, seventeen thousand out for a Pinto. They couldn't even move out of its own way. Well, we throw off on this younger generation. Well, can I help you something? Some of the middle age and older age don't have any fortitude. Who are they looking to for examples? What are they seeing? God give us some grit. Some fortitude. Where we say, come what may, Jesus comes first. We're going to live for Jesus. We're going to do everything in our power to be what Jesus would have us be. Amen. God, give us some folks with some fortitude. I hate to talk about myself. I hate to, but I'm going to. For years, I did the church a disservice. If I went through something, many times I didn't tell you. And when you would find out, 
people got the opinion that I had some kind of Superman part to me. Or I'd have neck surgery on Thursday and be in the, the pulpit on Sunday and stuff like that. People thought, well, Brother Doug, I mean, he's... No, I hurt like everybody else. But there's just something down inside of me that said, I'm going to hurt at the house. Might as well come out to church. Might as well hear what the Lord has to say in the house of God. I, when I had that first cancer surgery, I know I had it on Monday. I was in church on Wednesday. I could have done the announcement. Probably could have taught, even preached. Uh, but I had 50-something staples going. All oh, the kids freaked out. They th thought I looked like Frankenstein or something. Uh, 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 I could have stayed home. Uh, I didn't stay home. Why? Uh, this is home. Uh, uh, there's just something about being around God's house and God's people. Uh, hearing the songs of Zion sang. Uh, hearing the Word of God expounded on. Uh, I'm afraid I could watch it on TV, uh, but it's not the same. Uh, hey, uh, I like being here. Uh, it's not because I have anything special about me. Uh, I hurt like you hurt. I cut like you cut. I bleed like you bleed. Uh, but hey, uh, I want to press on weary pilgrim. Uh, I want to put God first. Uh, and by the grace of God, uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Uh, I understand there are times you got the gang. Stay home. I understand when there are times you want to and you physically can't. I understand that. Uh, but I'm talking about uh, there are times you could, uh, but you just won't press through it. Uh, 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 listen, talk to Brother Ed. He's hurting right now. Uh, why is he here? He's not Superman. Uh, he just wants to be in the house of God. Uh, he'd hurt at the house. He's not overdoing it. Uh, he's sitting there trying to prop up that leg and do whatever. Uh, but friend, I'm just trying to tell you, uh, there are folks that come to church that's got migraines. Uh, there's folks that come to church got teeth ache, uh, toothaches. Uh, there's folks that come to church that's hurting. Uh, there's folks that come to church with a broken heart and a smile on their face. Uh, there are folks that come because uh, they got some fortitude. Uh, young people, uh, quit making Olympians your heroes. Uh, quit making uh, uh, NBA and baseball and football players your heroes. Uh, look around and somebody that's got some faith uh, and some grit uh, and say they're living for God. Uh, and the same God that lives in them lives in me. Uh, and if I can aspire to be anything, I want to be somebody that lives for God. Amen. We'll impact this world when we've got some fortitude. Uh, listen, we'll impact this world by being fervent. That word means to be dedicated, zealous, fiery, right. eager. God help us to be fervent, be eager to serve God. Have a little fire about us. Uh, get fired up about them grandbabies, don't we? I'm over the hill and over the moon with mine. Y'all know that. That little girl gets anything she wants and things she don't even know she wants. Listen, they're probably watching. Miss Tay always said she did not want to have an iPad baby. And what she's meaning, she didn't want to have a baby that 24 hours a day is on an iPad instead of becoming social, instead of becoming, you know, a non-introvert, uh, uh, being well-rounded and and be able to communicate with people instead of having to text people. And, you know, just, she didn't want to have an iPad baby. Oh, we respect their wishes sometimes. <laughs> you know what it's like. Huh? I had Ella the other day for three, three hours by myself. It's amazing how many Oreos you can stuff in that little booger. <laughs> I gave her an Oreo, and she's going, which means more. No problem. She had her both jaws packed out with Oreos going, yep. Uh, well, we knew they was going to be on an airplane. And if you've seen Ella around here, she's got the attention span of a gnat. She just she gets bored real easy, and she's just busy all the time. You got to keep her occupied. You got to have books in front of her, and you got to have stickers in front. Of her. You got to have things that just keep her occupied, keep her mind going. 
and uh uh, uh, we knew that, so we we talked about maybe getting her a a kid's tablet, you know, that could be loaded up, and you know maybe occupy her with some some little games or some little songs or something, keep her attention while she's on this airplane. So we did address it with them; they were fine with it. Well, we ordered one. Well, it wasn't an iPad; it was junk. I mean, it took twenty minutes to load up any of the programs. Y'all had to. Ella ain't gonna handle that, you know. She's hitting, and if it don't come on, it's gone, you know. So, Miss Taya said, maybe for Christmas. Well, I saw Hallmark was running Christmas in July. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Ella. And you should have seen her when she got that thing. And we saw her. She was on the plane. She's playing on that thing. Well, what really touched my heart this morning, she was watching church on that thing. Amen. We have no problem getting fired up over them grandbabies. How come we're not fired up for the Lord? Yeah, right. yeah. How come we don't go the extra mile for the Lord? Amen. How come we don't give the Lord what He desires? Yeah. God, help us to be fervent. Romans 12, 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Peter 4, 8, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Oh, God, help us to be fervent. We'll impact others. And I say we'll impact others by simply presenting the facts. We can't compete with Hollywood's special effects. We can't keep uh, compete with the window washing crowd and all their smoke and glitter. You know what still works better than anything, and if anything ever will work, it's the only thing that will? The facts, the truth of the Word of God. Present the truth to people. That impacts people's lives. Uh, that's what it tells, it shows somebody that says they're a Christian to realize they're not a Christian. Uh, they haven't heard the truth. Uh, they're denying the truth. Uh, Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.4, uh, who would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13.8, for we can do nothing against the truth uh, uh, but for the truth. Uh, God God, help us to present the truth, the facts. That's what impacts the world. Amen. My friend, Brother Greg Phillips, has said this to me a million times. Uh, he says, uh, what are you going to do with the truth? It's the truth. Yeah. Hmm? I'm so tired of hearing all these people lie about this political race. Amen. Right. Now listen, I have heard over and over again how Kamala's the one that is to blame for the inflation. Let me help you some. Kamala didn't have a clue what policies were put in place. Huh? I've heard that she's responsible for not telling about mashed potato Biden's decline in his faculties. Friends, look on the TV. Watch him anytime he spoke. If you didn't know that man wasn't there... Uh, it's not on Kamala, it's on you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they're blaming her for every policy. Ever. i got news for you. Even Joe Biden didn't put in some of these policies. Who's ever really running this country's put in the policies? Uh, listen, uh, I wouldn't give you two cents for Kamala, and I can't say in mis mixed company what I really think of the woman. Uh, uh, listen, uh, she's a token. Uh, that's all it is. She couldn't even be a mouthpiece. Uh, once they got her in there and realized how I idiotic she was. Uh, they didn't put her in front of a camera. They didn't put her in front of a microphone. Uh, what few times they did speak, uh, she did speak to try to race off the internet. Uh, hey, she's a moron at best. Uh, she's not responsible for anything. Uh, listen, I'm here to tell you, uh, uh, Trump doesn't walk on water. Uh, 
Trump's a sinful man. Trump needs to trust in the Lord. Uh, listen, uh, I don't agree with everything that comes out of that man's mouth either. Uh, he uh, uh, he over-exaggerates some things. He'd be better off uh, if he just stood in front of all them people and told his policies. Uh, I left the uh, uh, mud slinging behind. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, the lesser two evils is easy to see. Uh, one's an idiot. Uh, the other has a proven track record. Uh, he can negotiate business deals. Uh, he can make a difference for our country. Uh, what a difference it would be in our country if he really got down to the truth. Uh, been three weeks since he got shot. Still haven't seen the weapon. Now they're saying they don't even have the video recording of the comms of the conversation between them. It was an inside job. Uh There's no way that 20-year-old punk that didn't even know if he was a man or a woman... There ain't no way in the world he could have made that shot. Mm -mm. He had no expert training, no military training. Listen, the adrenaline alone would have caused him not to come close to shooting him. Somebody knew what he was doing. They've proven there was three different weapons fired. One of them was the sniper shooting the kid. There are two other weapons. We'll never know the truth. Can I say the media will never tell you the truth? I seen a clip this week uh, where Whoopi Goldberg was praising Trump and proclaiming he was her friend uh, until he ran for politics. Now she calls him the Antichrist. Uh, and by the way, if you believe anything comes out of that woman's mouth, if anybody's full of the devil, it's her. Uh, listen, wouldn't it be good if you could just take somebody's word as their bond? Well, you can when you give them the Bible. Can I say... Aren't you sick of all this mess? Don't you think people in this world are sick of this mess? Hmm? Do you realize in the Olympics you've got two men who are competing for the gold medal in women's boxing? That's wicked. Uh, if a man don't know he's a man, he needs the truth. And we got a woman on the Supreme Court that don't know what a woman is. She needs the truth. Uh, listen, uh, the Bible's clear. God made man in his own image, uh, and he made woman from man. Uh, listen, there's only two genders. Uh, God created male and female. Uh, you're one or the other. Uh, if you don't know which bathroom to go into, go home and smack your mama is what I'm telling you. Huh? But it's filtered in the church. We want to tiptoe around the truth because we don't want to offend anybody. God loves you. You're okay just as you are. God loves you. You're okay. Like my skinny jeans? Good answer, Fred. That's what most Christians are. We don't want to offend anybody. Listen, you offend them by not telling them the truth. And what do you think at the great white throne judgment when they look over and you're in the bride of Christ and you're in the jury pool sitting there watching them to be sentenced uh, and they look over at you and say, why didn't you tell me the truth uh, when they're going to be sentenced to hell, the lake of fire forevermore? Do you think that's going to offend them? I'd rather offend them with the truth now than them face the truth and their blood be required at my hands. The truth of the matter is God does love you. He loves you. But if you're still in your sins, you're going to die and go to hell. But if you've been saved by the good grace of God, hallelujah. Huh? You can tell people the truth. You know why a lot of people don't want to come to churches like ours? Because of this book. They don't want to deal with the truth. Just like anybody that votes for Kamala, Lord have mercy. They don't want to deal with truth. But can I say, the truth will set you free. Yes, and you'll make impacts in people's lives by giving them the truth. I appreciate our folks that go to the jail, and I appreciate that Miss Tina and Brother Phil told that young lady the truth today. And I appreciate they did it in the right spirit. And I appreciate that they didn't browbeat her and try and get a one, two, three little decision out of her and make her twofold the child of hell. I'm glad they presented her with truth. 
Now let the Holy Ghost do His job. I'm about done. We'll impact this world by showing forgiveness. Listen, we live in a world full of hate. Some of it's propped up. Some of it is egged on. Some of it is fabricated. But we live in a world full of hate because they know not the love of God. Jesus said, this is how the world will know that you're my, my disciples, that you have love one for another. And what speaks godliness more than showing forgiveness? And of course, the Bible says in Ephesians 4.32, And be a kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Amen. Having a forgiving spirit, regardless of what folks have done to you or done to folks around you, is something that flesh cannot produce. That's something that's heaven sent. I'm talking true forgiveness. I'm talking not mouthing forgiveness. I'm talking about forgiveness with works meet for repentance. Where you show works of your forgiveness. Where you learn to forgive like God did. And never bring it up against them again. And then lastly, we'll impact this world by being focused. You know why I need preaching? Keeps me focused. Amen. Keeps my eye on the bubble. I heard something, by the way. Brother Phil, you might have been a great welder, but you can't read a bubble on a level. That's what I heard. You say, well, it's pretty close. Pretty close, don't, don't, don't cut it when you want something to be square. Huh? Heard that. You got to get focused, Brother Phil. Look at that bubble. Is it in the center or not? Huh? Well, tell the truth, Brother Ray. Needs some help, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for the manpower and wanting to come to help, Brother Phil. But if you're going to sign up, do the job, huh? No. Uh, I do appreciate those that are working on that garage coming a long way. Be ready for metal tomorrow. What a blessing. But, friends, we got to be focused. Got to be focused on what God wants us to be focused on. We're to be focused on souls needing to be saved. There's only two tangible things in this entire world that, that's going to be in heaven when you get there. Things you can put your hand on. The Word of God, it's forever settled in heaven. That's right. And people. Right. Amen. That's the only thing you, you, you can have in heaven that's tangible in this world. We ought to seek to take as many people to heaven with us as we can. Yes. And when we're focused on souls, my dear friends, we're focused on the right thing. It's okay to have relaxation. It's okay to take vacation. It's okay to have other things in your life, but never take your eye off the bubble. All around you, there's somebody who needs Jesus. You need to be focused on souls. You need to be focused on our service. You've heard me say this. You've heard me say it. I'm going to say it again. 100 years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what you did for Jesus. Not going to matter where your address was. Not going to matter what you drove or didn't drive. Don't matter if you have Lamborghinis there. Don't matter. What was that one Ferrari you said? What was the, what was the number on that Ferrari? What's the model number? FKP37 Ferrari. Lambo. Never heard of it. I'll never ever own one, and neither will you. <laughs> but there won't be one in heaven. No. But maybe your neighbor will be. You just keep being faithful, make an impact. Huh? Huh? Got to be focused on our service for the Lord. Back when I taught sales and trained salespeople, had a hundred under me underneath me at one time. Brother Donald, I made this clear to him. A salesman who's on 100% commission can never have a bad day. you got to check whatever happened on the way into work. you got to check whatever happened at the house. you got to check whatever you're facing. 
you got to check that at the door. Because when you hit that sales floor, whether or not you eat depends on if you sell. Can I say as Christians, we can never have a bad day. Because somebody's watching us. We're written epistles known and read of all men. Or somebody may come in our path that we can impact for Christ. Never lose focus on our service for the King. And lastly, never, ever lose focus of the Savior. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Matter of fact, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, all this stuff will be all right. Amen. We get in trouble when we take our eyes off of him. Where he leads, I will follow. God help us to watch his leading. I wonder, what kind of impact are we really making? Now listen, you've heard me say, the sun never sets on the ministry of our church. The missionaries we support, the monies we've given, what we have online, but I wonder what impact each individual one of us is making. You realize if we each won one, our church would double. I didn't say win 100. Let's just try winning one. Impacting one. What a difference we can make. Because they may win two. Or they may be a household of five. Why don't we focus on what's really important? And that's the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make an impact. I trust you will. And I say, looking around this building, many of you made an impact in my life. You've increased my faith. You've increased my joy. You've increased my hope. Let's don't keep it here. Let's take it out there and win somebody for Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get us on. While they're coming, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for those others having not received the promise still live by faith. Help us, Lord, to impact somebody for your glory. Help us to learn to deny self and to let the Lord have his way in our hearts and our lives. Lord, there's wonderful, godly people in this service tonight. Lord, they've made an impression and an impact in my life. God, give them grace to make an impact in some sinner's life, in some wayward soul's life. God, help us to reach beyond our borders to impact somebody else. Bless this invitation. God, speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.